Hi there, Agile friends. I'll come in here just with a quick note to let you know that the Agile Online Summit 2022 is coming soon. To know more, check out bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. That's all one word, all lowercase, bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. Now, stick around to the end of the episode if you want to know more. But for now, on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our success and Thursday question and episode this week with Bert Hymans. Hey, Bert. Welcome. Hey, Vasco. So, uh, Thursday is success question here on the podcast, the question of the week, of course. But before we dive into that, do share with us, Bert, uh, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Well, I- I'm, a, I'm a lean coffee traditionalist. <laughs> I just really like... Um having people sit down, think of, think of, of things that they uh, want to discuss for three to five minutes in silence. So nobody is influencing each other. And I also put up three questions on, on the board. It's uh, what went well, what could have uh, gone better, or what, what could we have done better? That's, that's an important phrasing. Uh, uh, I don't like to make it a negative question. And then what puzzled you in last sprint? Those are three questions, but they can go outside those questions. Um, and then everybody comes to the comes to the board, puts up their topic, says real in, in, in a few sentences what they mean by it, because sometimes a uh, post-it is too small to get an idea across. And then uh, we do a dot voting and, and start discussing. Or sometimes if it's if, if it's obvious, then uh, then we don't do the, the dot voting. Uh, if it's obvious that we have enough time. So if not, if it's if the priority is obvious, absolutely. Yeah. This this is uh, uh, the Lean Coffee has been mentioned several times here on the podcast. Of course, also in the context of retrospectives, and uh, y- you have hosted the Lean Coffee mm-hmm. in the Scrum Master Summit in the past, perhaps also in the future. Who knows? Uh, there's a reason mind. why you think uh, Lean Coffee is a great format for conversation mm-hmm. with either teams that have been working a long time together. Or with complete strangers that just joined the Zoom meeting at a random time during the Scrum Summit. So tell us a little bit more about that. How, how did you come to be so passionate about the Lean Coffee Bird? Well, I believe it's the best process, and I, I haven't found a better one, uh, with uh, to spend time, limited time, with a small group of maximum 15 people in the most efficient way to share knowledge. And why does that work? Because why does that work? It, it's the, it, the psychology of it is brilliant. Yeah? So Lean Coffee was also invented by, by Jim Benson, who is a psychologist. Um, and the idea is that everybody starts out without messing up each, other, each other's train of thought. So it's, the, it's called the, the nominative, nominative method. Everybody just sits down in silence. So I don't get influenced by someone who is superior to me or some someone who yeah who, you write might... your ideas before you hear somebody else's ideas voila so no no in, no intervention no no noise from other people so that's that's really strong and then the magic happens post it notes become visual or in a digital board everybody sees what we are going to talk about okay so that's that, that's nice everybody knows from each other what they want to discuss and then a process takes place that prioritizes what we think as a group is the most important thing to talk about, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. So everybody is involved in that process. Everybody knows, well, I'm going to try to make the best of my time and your time. I'm going to try to get the most value. And and as a moderator, you have to create that atmosphere. I'm going to get the most value out of this time together. And it takes a really, really nasty person to intervene in such a such a process I, or, or, or such a format. I, I haven't encountered that situation yet, and I hope I never will. Yeah, and actually, well, one of the aspects that you talked about uh, that I want to highlight is that this it's a great facilitation technique. It's very unobtrusive, right? It's mm-hmm. really about the content. It's about what people are talking about. But once you know the format and, and how to facilitate it, it's actually rather easy to repeat that, right? And and it is really about people coming up with the topics they want to discuss. So yeah, you 
Bert, uh, we'll put the link on the show notes, by the way, to other Lean Coffee episodes. There's some great takes on uh, mm-hmm. the use of Lean Coffee for you know the most varied topics, retrospectives, mm-hmm. of course, but not only retrospectives. But Bert, now let's take turn our attention to success and what it means for us as Scrum Masters. So the question to you, Bert, is what does success mean for you as a Scrum Master? That's a really hard question. Huh? So yeah. how do you know that what you're doing actually works? And uh, I, I'm in an ongoing conclusion that, that helping people be the best version of themselves is something that that's really important to have a good outcome. So that that's that's the cornerstone of things. But how do how do you know if you're going if you're doing that well? well uh, if you can tell it that you that you nudge the system a little bit in a good direction, so so it, it facilitates the path for people to become better versions of themselves. Then you're doing then you're doing something something good. Let's turn that question also around, and I think that's an easier question to answer. What, what how question? can you the question the uh, the inverse question, not how can you do something good to get the best out of people, but I think we can come up with a lot of ideas of how to get the worst out of people. <laughs> so if we meditate on that and do the opposite, well, we might go get get really really good good results. For instance, if you punish people for working together with with each other or uh, cooperate uh, cooperating, that's not good. My so, uh, autocorrect just put punch instead of punish people but punch might be a punishment as well <laughs> yeah let, let's not punch people <laughs> or some sometimes you so, so want to what, punch. Well, i guess what you mean is not not necessarily for working together but whatever good behavior you uh-huh. observe if you yes. punish people for yeah. that like for example people will come up and say hey i found this bug and instead of uh, commending them for having found the bug you you tell the tester God damn it, why are you finding so many bugs? Yes, that would definitely be very hard on that test and he won't speak to you anymore. <laughs> or would, wouldn't wouldn't come up with uh, that kind of transparency <laughs> in the future. Oh, it, it that happens to some to some managers. Huh? They uh, they com- they complain that nobody vis- visits them anymore and that they always know things at the last moment. And it's a vicious circle. If you if you meet uh, honesty with uh, just an, an honest, an honest bad, an honest piece of piece of bad news. If you meet that with hostility, then people will get conditioned and they won't feel good about telling you things that you probably need to do your job. So yeah, you know. exactly. Like if people don't feel comfortable in potentially uncomfortable moments with you, that's definitely going to be a failure for scrum masters because that's exactly what they need to feel. They need to feel comfortable with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the idea of, uh, of of safe space. The, but it, that gets misunderstood, by the way. I also think that if you create a proper safe space, it's not a space that prevents offense. I think a proper safe space in a business environment encourages people to be brutally honest without others feeling offended. So I I have a an environment, and and if you can create this as a as a scrum master, you're really doing something good. If you can create an environment where person A tells person B, hey, you know, last week what you did there that was that was that was a real big problem during a retrospective, as some or or maybe in between, but retrospectives are the place where you would discuss certain things. What you did there was was really bad. You 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 made us feel less than a than a team. And if that person says thank you for the feedback, you you created a good atmosphere. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And and it it starts with the, the the belief, I guess, that when you get feedback, if it's especially if it's negative, obviously, you you accept that you are getting that feedback because others want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that yeah. belief needs to be there. If if we get you know negative feedback and we believe that actually I'm being criticized mm-hmm rather than helped, then obviously we're going to hide, right? Like we're Mm going to try to hide the mistakes we make and potentially even blame them on others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. and that's a destructive uh, process. And again, it can start off with small things. If if someone, and many teams have this experience, there's someone who's always late for the stand-ups. You know that situation? (laughs) So so you you know up front, okay, well, he's going to be five minutes late. but that's not really nice because they miss a part of the um, 
of the ceremony of the of the, the opening of the conversation of the day. exactly yeah, the conversation yeah. so i i like to 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 correct that or, or try to to help them be on time or maybe just put the stand up on another at another moment if they they always get stuck in traffic or if their bus is always a little late and and, um, and i try to, to to fix that so so it comes easy to create and actually teams. actually that that's a good point it it also points to us as scrum masters are responsible for creating an environment where everyone can be a good mm-hmm. team member, a contributor, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. and what you just said is that sometimes people are late not because of them, but because of something else, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, if we don't pay attention to that, if uh, on the other hand we get angry mm-hmm. and complain about it, yeah. then they probably don't feel open enough to say, "Hey, you know, I just have to drop my child at the kindergarten, and the bus is late when I." you know, drop the child at the kindergarten. That's why I can't yeah. be on time. And that's something that you will not hear someone say in a hostile environment uh, or in a, uh, in yeah, a situation. Yeah, they will say something rather like, yeah, but there's not really much interesting shared in the daily anyway. Yeah. If I'm, yeah. If, I'm, if I'm five minutes late, I don't lose anything. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, you, when you start hearing those kind of things, oh, you... Yeah, Some that's kind a of defensive, flag should go up. That's a defensive yeah. behavior, by the way. And mm-hmm. defense always means that they've felt attacked. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I truly believe that people are the product of the system that they work in. Uh, given that, of course, they, they also have enough discipline. So you, without discipline, you can put up any system, uh, the, the best system in the world. If work isn't done, it's not done. Huh? Absolutely. Well, that was a great perspective on the question. What does the opposite of success mean? Thank you for sharing that, Bert. Hey, thanks. My pleasure. Hi there, Agile friends. Thank you for sticking around to know more about this year's Agile Online Summit. The summit will have four keynotes and four tracks you will not want to miss. The keynotes will touch on critical topics for us, from delivering on time to helping you to focus on sustainability. The four tracks are tools, so we'll focus on tools you need to excel at your job, but also your mission. We'll also have a track on sustainability, which is, of course, about people and their sustainable pace, but it's also about how do we bring sustainability to the products and the planet we inhabit. We'll have a third track about happiness, talking about doing what we love and most crucially, loving what we do. And finally, the fourth track will be live. It will be mostly hands-on sessions to help you roll up your sleeves together with the presenters. Oh, and we will also have a coaching clinic, as we usually do, organized to help you discuss and get inspired to solve the hardest challenges you face at work. This year, we'll have a special emphasis on interaction with your peers, so get your ticket and join the Slack at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. As always, we have free tickets for anyone that wants to attend live and the VIP tickets for those of you who want to keep the videos forever. So check them out at bit.ly forward slash AOS 2022. I'll see you on the conference floor. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.